G'day, welcome back to Project Prepeg. Story of a sunken fishing trawler converting into a global expedition and research boat. This week, we got some cool stuff. Pew pew! Welding. Shiny. And we had a visit from a mate. Building brew peg is a huge job. It takes everything that we've got. And without our amazing Patreon support crew, we wouldn't be able to do it. If you'd like to support the project, get on board the boat, as well as see exclusive monthly live feeds and every episode we produce early and ad free, as well as behind the scenes content, we'd love to have you on board. So while Jess stops the dust from going into those two cabins, what we need to focus on is getting these ribs in. And so you can see right down here where we've plasmed the old rib out, there's still a bit of excess steel and stuff left on both of them, that one and that one there. So we need to basically get rid of it. So we're gonna get in there with the grinders um, and just rip that down to bare steel and then we can weld in our two new ribs over here. It's silly. Jess has finished the wall of dust protection. So um, both rooms are basically sealed up hermetically. Um, and of course, magnets are awesome. Yeah. She sealed it so tight there's no oxygen left in those rooms. <laughs> so you, you do need scoop you need scuba gear if you're going in there. Jess is setting up to do sanding. She's got that wall to sand off and then we've got some spot prime that we're gonna do on it. She'll probably do all of the walls, but um, she's just setting up on that one. And then on the other side, the galley over here, I'm grinding out the last of the rust and getting into the welding. Two ribs welded in, so using flux core and MIG. The plan now, I've just discovered there's a bit of rust in the bottom of these. Jess found it when she was crawling around having a good look at the boat. Um, we're going to hack these out and cut them off on a diagonal, same as what that rib is just there. Are you going to use the 9 inch? I am going to use the 9 inch. Are we doing it? <laughs> yeah. Jess has also sanded pretty much this whole end of the cabin, so that wall oh, just in front of her there and then that wall under the window. She's going to spin around and start working on this wall here, which is normally in front of the prep bench where the stove goes, and then also do the wall down the end there where that fan and the window and so on is. 
And this is the wall that we're going to start this, um, putting the stainless panels on first, right? Yeah, that'll be the first one. Yeah, yeah. yeah that'll be great. Will be. Um, and you're going to cut out those for me as well, like you did on the other side, the little panels over here. Yes. Uh, I'll do them when I've got the plasma, when I've got the plasma out. By sticking this stainless plate up behind the panels that I'm about to cut out, it means that I'm not going to get any crap all over our hydraulic um, pipes. These are our pipes here that go up to our anchor winch, the one that feed and one that turn. I don't want to cover them in steel, so put a bit of stainless between the steel and the pipe, and that way it's going to reflect any rubbish that we've cut from here, bounce it back down onto the floor. I'm just going to carry out cutting for five minutes. I think I found where the rust went. I found some rust. Now, rust inside these pipes is actually normal. When you seal them off as a completely sealed unit, the oxygen that's left inside will rust out the inside of the pipes because you can't obviously paint it. Um, but once that oxygen's used up making rust, it stops rusting. So it'll last 50 years without it being a problem. Now, how much rust is normal inside some of these pipes? I don't know the answer to that. Is it that much? I don't know. Is it that much? I still don't know. Either way, the worst of the rust is going to be at the bottom of that rib because when this boat sunk, those ribs would have filled up with water and then all of the crap, gravity pushed it down to the bottom, would have sat around the bottom. Now, um, they're not sealed ribs because over the years of whatever, people have drilled holes and they've stuck things in them and done all sorts of stuff, so they were always going to rust out on the inside. However, cutting the bottom off, smacking the sides and getting rid of all the loose rust and then sealing all of those holes will make them into a sealed unit. Um, there's plenty of thickness there. There's still like well over maybe two, two and a half mil thickness on, on the walls when you cut into them. Um, so they're still really quite robust. Uh, but yeah, we've whacked out all of the loose rust and we're going to cap the bottom off just to make them safe again. But what we've found, compacted rust. So on the inside here, I don't know if you can see that, I don't know if it'll focus, but anyway, lots and lots of rust basically compacted right the way down through that sort of chunk that we just cut out, sat like that on the on the ground. We've also noticed that there's a bit of rust up on the side here, there's a pinhole up here. So what we're going to do is just cut in and replace that. So um, we'll just chop a foot off that and, and make sort of life a bit easier. 
Um, don't know what we're going to do with this one, whether or not we're going to do the same sort of thing, cut like a foot off or, or what have you. We've got plenty of steel to replace it. Um, but yeah, we just need to get any sort of compacted rubbish out from underneath and then weld that up. deep and profound think about how I'm going to do this and I've decided rather than do a 45 on the bottom I'm just going to weld them straight in as they were originally. Um, not for any other reason than I don't need to do a 45 anymore. I've solved the problem. I'm just going to, yeah I figured I'd just be trimming out a bit of rust at the bottom and that's what 45 is for. But I don't need to do that so I can just um, put a piece of straight bar in there which makes life easy. Means I can get the job finished today too which is something nice. All right, so that's the two ribs there and the two bottom of the ribs there welded in. Now the ribs are in, the structural surgery is complete. We've finished the sanding on that side of the cabin. We've got to go through and now do some spot etching. This side here, this wall here, we have to go through and start sanding. We've got, you can see we've blasted up on the roof there some bits we weren't happy with. Um, they've all been taken back to metal, so we need to etch those as well. Um, yeah, so we'll get in, we'll start doing that sanding and probably painting in the next day or two. We are still waiting on our sandblaster to arrive, um, hence the floor is still partly grey, partly bare steel. Um, but we also ran out of sand, so we've been furiously trying to dry sand while we are waiting for that sandblaster to arrive. We dragged the stainless up on deck, this is what's going to become the wall panels. The weather's holding, so we're able to get quite a bit of sand done, organised for our blasting. This is how we dry it in the back of the ute. We used to use brew peg, a much bigger area, but this is what we've got to use at the moment. So once it's dried, it goes into the sieve, gets sieved, and then ends up in these buckets, which we cover with a lid. We are starting to do walls. So this is what we call our prep bench, or the, the prep wall. It's basically the stove. The cooktop is in this corner over here, just under that open window there. Um, above us, we've got the pipe for our extractor fan and then a hole in the roof that we had an old extractor fan that's no longer going to be used. Really, I should weld that up. Um, we need to fit stainless to this wall here. So today's job is to drag in a sheet of stainless and start mounting it onto that wall. source of truth everything else is going to be cut to shape etc however the deck in the kitchen slopes down or galley slopes down off to the left or poor hand side um, so uh, I have to basically prop this side up in order to get this edge level with this bulkhead or wall see what I did there multilingual whoa to measure down and do a line like that because this is going to be cut on an angle to suit the roof. Oh yeah. I've got to get this edge and that edge lined or else the whole sheet will be funny. Yeah. Awesome. Okay. Don't 
Don't push it too hard because it might. <laughs> One of our mates, Scott, an Air Force pilot, dropped in for a couple of days to give us a hand. Last time we saw Scott, he was building a boat of his own. Howdy. <laughs> Scott built this boat, oh, what, probably 12 months ago? Yeah. Comes with motors, two of them. Really awesome sort of helm position, heaps of space. This is an expedition <laughs> trailer boat, basically, I suppose you'd call it. Yeah, it's a mini brew pig. Scott built it with a deep V hull for ocean work. It's also got long range fuel and water tanks, as well as built in air conditioning. Uh, right, so 476474. I want to make sure there's no air gaps behind, so I sealed up all the little drill holes from the years of different ideas of people putting things on this wall. So there we have it, that's the top half of the wall insulated. Now, the reason why we're using this foil board, not for any particular reason, we don't care about the foil, we're interested in the polystyrene. Um, it's sandwiched between a layer of six mil mild steel here, and then it's gonna have 1.2 mil stainless on this side. So the foil is completely irrelevant, it won't do anything. Um, however, it does provide a good surface to glue to, hence we've glued it the way we did. Um, and these battens um, are essentially just spaces that won't crush. We're going to drill right through these and we're going to put a thread into the steel and that's going to allow us to bolt the stainless part up against that wood and we're not going to have any deflection right the way along that wall. Um, this is basically just to try and stop a thermal bridge so it's only a tiny bit of insulation, it's only 10 mil um, but it's better than going straight onto the steel which is what we were going to do, it's not really going to work so um, yeah. We'll keep going, we'll get, if we've got a little bit of the stuff left, over there, and we'll see if we can get that bottom part insulated as well. Yep, yep, back, uh, back slide, a little bit more, right there, that's, that's where it sits. Oh, 
I'll hold the top up. Yeah. Fuck, that must have been. Good shot, Frank. <laughs> <laughs> it's fine. 50mm down from the roof is, a, is oh, one yes. of these. Yep. So if we just go below that, we're good. Okay. You going? Oh, yeah. Definitely going in. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. I, was thinking, I was thinking about standing or something. Yeah. <laughs> it's all took two people on the one drill. <laughs> She just needs a little bit of extra pressure. That was great. It's taking two people on the drill to get the thing through. She's <laughs> oh, right. Hold oh, still. Stay the same. Yeah. yeah. 
You can only get so wet. How are you going to go with getting to the wet? It's all epoxy. Oh, so that's fine. Yeah, it's completely fine. Yeah. If you guys are going a long way away, mm. you need a deep thing. Mm. You have to have absolutely, a deep Absolutely, absolutely. Because it, yeah, it'll save someone's yeah. life. Yeah, yeah. It'll yeah. bring them back, it'll mm. restart the heart, it'll yeah. put it back into a normal, normal mm. rhythm. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, especially if drownings or any of that, mm. that stuff yeah. Yeah. ever happened. Uh, yeah. Just essential. I thought I was knowing like that, and then it would drop below normal, way below yeah. normal, and then it would go back up again, stay like that for a while, and I'd be, and then it would go down again. Oh, you poor thing! Yeah. But yeah, that's what's changed recently, is it stopped, and I'm off my meds. I'm down to like, I'm just coming off the last little bit. I have both that goes up and down, up and down, and that's what was destroying my tissues. My, my getting, um, what was the last big. Um, because I get blood pressure as well, so I was going down to like 60 over 30 blood pressure and oh. then I would go up and the last big one I went to hospital was 240 over 220 oh, and you just don't, you just can't finish right, you just can't, it's just feels like you're about to explode. So I was up and down, up and down for all those years because it's connected tissue, my tissues are weak and um, so that's an ongoing problem. Sort of blood specialist and got some infections under control. But she shared some information with me about the connective tissue disorder. She mentioned a couple of things and then I did some research and I put two and two together and I realised that there were some things missing out of what I was doing and I did them and within you went, two weeks it was like full stop. You literally on the video, mm. you went from having ups and downs, yeah. walking stick, no walking stick on the tools, I need to rest for a week, Electric and then you've just gone phew, vertical up yeah. to complete 100%. Yeah. I'm just kind of, I'm on my six month and it's stuck because I wanted to check it stable and, and just, yeah, just, just stop. Well,